Welcome to Fun Pilot Podcast, where we are unpacking opinions and changing destinations. I am your host, Shirley Altador, where each week we will chat about how to rise strong out of all types of obstacles that come with relationships. Through personal life experiences and discussions ranging from infidelity, trust, forgiveness, sex, heartbreak, self-love, and so much more. I am passionate and obsessed to provide guidance to every woman to create a better life. Let's dive in, pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. With me, your virtual girlfriend. Welcome back to Fun Palais as we enter into another episode of season three, Sex and a Relationship. We have a special guest with us today. Her name is Maggie Dung. She is a podcaster, fitness and life coach and universal channeler who helps people master their physical, mental, emotional and spiritual fitness so they can raise their consciousness and live with fulfillment. Maggie, thank you for being a guest on the show. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Wonderful. We ex- are excited and having you and having our discussion today. I'm very, very happy that you um reached out to me about being a guest on the show because sex is a topic that not everyone is comfortable about. And I've realized not every woman is comfortable talking about. So anytime a woman reaches out to me and they're like, hey, I'm open and all game and talking about sex, I'm all for it. Because it's a topic that even though we all engage in the activity, half of us are ashamed to talk about the activity that we are engaged in. But so the listeners can know who you are and a little bit about yourself, if you can start off with your story and then why you were interested in being part of this season, Sex in the Relationship. Yeah, absolutely. So my story, I was abused growing up as a kid, and I did move to the States when I was 10. So my entire life changed right then. And then at 16, my life changed again because I lost my mom to breast cancer that Mm -hmm. year. And at that time, my dad had already been in jail for two years. So all of a sudden, I needed to step up and take responsibility for my life for my little brother, who is five years younger than me. So I was forced to grow up at a pretty young age. And I did find myself throughout that process, though, because I hit that rock bottom in my life and ended up with a couple eating disorders, depression, anxiety, and still dealing with grief. And at that point, I was applying to colleges and my life was just taking a turn. But throughout that process, I healed a lot from those things and even from being abused as a child. And this entire journey has just been a lot of healing, a lot of growing. And that's how I got to where I am today, helping other people do the same, because it's a lot of looking inwards. And in our society, we don't like to do that. We like to point out what other people are doing wrong and how unfair life is, which I've done it too. When I was sitting in that rock bottom place, I was blaming life for being so unfair. And I realized that it wasn't until I stopped playing the victim and I started really taking responsibility for my own life, that's when everything changed. So we do have the power to change our entire lives. And I'm excited to be here on this show because sex is something that throughout my healing journey, I needed to work through a lot of that because growing up, I was abused, even sexually, and I had to figure out what a healthy relationship with my body is and what a healthy relationship with sex is. And I just really want to spread the message to other people. I talk about this topic on my podcast a lot as well, because in society, like you said, we don't like to talk about it, but we need to. We need to get comfortable talking about sex because it's such a huge part of our lives. 
Absolutely. I 100% agree. Before we get into the discussion questions, I wanted to say you're right. We are all professional victim players. We will find anything and everything to blame about our problems but ourselves because it's easier for us to cast the blame on someone else or something than an for us to accept the responsibility that, you know what, I need to get up and do something. Prime example, you can't pay your bills. You need to figure it out. If you have to do 25 applications a day, just do it. But it's easier for us to say, no one's hiring. It's just easier, you know, and that's just a simple example I'm getting. Of course, we all know it can get deeper than that, but it's easier to cast blame on others and things than it is for us to take responsibility. Now, just to ask you a few questions, where did you immigrate from? I came from China. So I grew up in China for 10 years and then I moved to California. Gotcha. And when you say abuse, are we talking about emotional, physical, or verbal abuse? All of it. and Or sexual. Little- yeah. And a little bit of sexual abuse as well. Okay. Did did you know your abuser? And what I mean by that was your abuser a family member? Yes. Okay. And were you close with your mother at 16 when she passed away? Yeah, I was really close with my mom. She was actually one of the only family members that I was really close with. When we immigrated here, it was just my mom, me, and my little brother. So the three of us came and oh, I was... Dad didn't come. No. So he he's still in jail right now in China. Oh. this And how many years are we talking? Wait, I did read. He has a life sentence? Yes. As of now, he has a life sentence, but he's trying to fight out of it. So we'll see what happens. Okay. And do you have a good relationship with your father? No, he was actually the one who abused me a lot growing up. Oh, okay. This was before the age of five. So right about the time my brother came along when I was five, he stopped doing that. So it was mostly just me and my mom. Okay. Did mom know? Yeah, she knew. Okay. And I think she was also not in a good place to stand up to speak up for herself because she was also getting abused I mean even before I was born she was abused by him and and she barely told me this probably a couple days before she passed away she started telling me all of this how did she find the courage to up and leave China to come to the U.S. with her two children did she just have enough she wanted the best for us really because she was that person I mean she sacrificed so much for both of us and her and my dad were actually never divorced so they were still together technically by the time that she passed away got it and dad was incarcerated as well when she passed away right he had been incarcerated at that point for I think about two years Okay. How long has it been since you've seen your father? Oh, it's probably been, I want to say, six, seven years. Oh, six, seven years. So did you go back to China to go visit him in jail? No, I've never been back oh. since since I came here. I haven't been back, but he did come to visit us when we first moved here. So for the first two or three years, he would make regular visits until he stopped doing that. And then he was incarcerated. Got it. Got it. Okay. So at the age of 16, your mom passed away. Do you, did you, or do you have family in California? Just my little brother. So there's just the two of us. So at 16, you literally had no choice, but to literally be a full-blown adult with an adopted child, which is really your adopted brother. How old was your brother? You said five years younger? Yeah. So he was 11. And at 17, I actually went to court. So what ended up happening was I went to court to be declared as an emancipated minor. And he ended up going into a guardianship situation. So I didn't really have to become his guardian, which is kind of a good thing because I wouldn't have known how to take care of him. What the, At 17, you wouldn't. Like, what do you know? I mean, that's your brother. You don't know how to be a mother to him. Right, right. So 
it's kind of interesting how everything worked out in that way. So I'm grateful that things kind of fell into place on their own almost. And yeah, it was just me, my brother, and and he's still in the Bay Area right now, which is where I'm from. And I've moved down to San Diego. Okay. And are you guys close? Because I guess he went into some type of guardianship where somebody was taking care of him. You were an emancipated minor, so you were able to do pretty much do what you want. But were you able to keep in close contact with him? Yeah, we are so pretty close. We still talk. I do know that every time I talk to him, he I can sense that from him that he's still sad. You know, like as a 15 year old right now he hasn't healed and he hasn't done a lot of the shadow work so it's difficult for him okay oh brother's still so he's only 15 right now he's 15 and i'm 20 oh so you guys are still like this is (laughs) oh my gosh you make me so feel so old maggie i have like (laughs) I'm like about to be 38 and I'm thinking like, oh, yeah, I think mentally I think I'm in my 20s, but no, girl, I'm you know, nah, I'm almost 40. OK, so he's 15. So this is all still new. Your mother have it's only it hasn't even been five years since your mother has passed. Right. It's been four years, but I would say the past four years, I mean, I'm, I'm barely getting to a point in my life. I would say until the beginning of this year. The past four years, it's been just crazy ups and downs and healing. And yeah, it was a lot until the beginning of this year. That's when I actually felt like I could breathe for once and just be in peace. That's good. Well, you know, there's no time frame on healing. Healing does take time and everyone's time is different. So however long your healing may take, just embrace it and, you know, continue to be positive about it. So thank you, 20-year-old Maggie, for being part of my show and talking about sex. And I'm glad that you are enlightened enough to know that it is an important topic that needs to be discussed. Um, And this is great because you're the youngest one for the season, (laughs) which is good. I like that because it lets me know like your maturity level is in a good place at 20 years old for you to realize that this is something important that we do need to talk about. So the first question I'm going to ask you, do you feel as though there is a difference between making love and having sex? Oh, absolutely. Having sex, to me, just having sex is that physical interaction Mm -hmm. with someone. So that's just, I can do it with anyone, right? And making love there's love behind it and it's a special energetic exchange that you have with someone and in that act of making love there is emotional exchange you have to be compatible mentally and energetically really and it's just it's a beautiful experience when you are truly in that space of making love with someone instead of just having sex with two bodies Exactly. I agree. To me, it is also two separate things. Although sometimes I think subconsciously, I don't even realize I'm saying having sex, but the words, the two things making love and sex means two separate things for me, which is very similar to the way I'm thinking. To me, when you have sex with somebody, it's kind of like a one night stand thing, or you you know, you know, may never see that person again type of thing. I don't even put it in the friends with benefits cat. Well, I guess you could because your friends with benefits could be just a sexual interaction and it's not really making love. But making love with someone is a soul tie. It is a mental connection. It's much deeper and there's so many more connections tied to that than just having sex. We're talking about uh, communication level, spiritual level, emotional level, your mental state. So, so many different aspects fall into the making love category. Good. Now, are you presently in a relationship? I am not currently. Okay. Have you been in the past? Yes. Okay. But right now... Miss Maggie is single. Now, let's see. Do you, what are your thoughts on casual sex or friends with benefits? Is that something that you entertain? I guess it depends on what you want to call it. I'm used to hearing friends with benefits, but casual sex, I guess, is, it falls all under that same category. 
personally, that's not for me. <laughs> I, <laughs> I've only had sex with people who I've been in long-term relationships with, which is not a lot of people because, you know, I'm 20 and I haven't dated that many people. Gotcha. So, so casual sex is not really my thing. Okay. And I do see that happening a lot, especially people my age. Back when I was in college, I did go to college for two years before I dropped out. Mm -hmm. But when I was in college, there was a lot of that casual sex going on. And I was tempted to participate in that. But I realized at the end of the day that sex is truly the sacred thing. And it's, it's not meant to be taken lightly. Now, at such a young age... And age is obviously just a number, truly, because at 20 years old, you're a lot more, I feel, in my opinion, mature than some other 20 years old people. Because even me at 20, I feel like I was a little immature. And, you know, hubby and I started off as friends with benefits. So you're, I feel like, even way ahead of me from 18 years ago. But how did you, through all the trauma that you've been through, how were you able to make like really concrete, stand on your two feet and in college where at times there's so much temptation, make a decision. Nope, this is not for me. I'm not doing this. Yeah. So I'm always that person. And I've always been that person who doesn't like to follow the crowd. <laughs> That's just Good. me. Good. And when I realized that so many people were doing that, I mean, a part of me was was very tempted to participate and join and what other people were doing. But at the end of the day, I always come back to myself and I ask myself, is this the right thing for me to do? Does this actually resonate with me? And that's the space where I make decisions. So I don't really make decisions on the spot or irrationally. I always come back to myself and ask myself, do I align with this? Because I don't want to take actions. I don't want to make decisions that, that are not aligned with me. Exactly. Good response. Good response. So now let me ask you, do you believe in sex before marriage? Or how do you, uh, first, uh, how do you feel about marriage? And I guess the question is, would you see yourself having a companion for life, even if you are not legally binded in the state that you're in? Or is marriage something that is important to you? I'm not opposed to marriage, but I'm also not, not, you know, making that a goal in my life. Okay. So either way, I'm okay. But oh. I, I do see myself in a committed partnership or relationship because I, I don't see myself, you know, sleeping around and having casual sex and talking to a lot of different people. So I I do see myself in a committed relationship, but at the end of the day, I feel like marriage is just a legal binding term that you put on it. I like it. One thing I have someone categorized that is it it's the luxury part of the relationship. That's how she uh, visualized it, which I felt like it was a great um, way to categorize marriage. I, um, for some people, it might not be great because marriage is very important for some people, but I can totally understand what she means. It, it, it is a luxury part of the relationship because she was basically saying, even if we didn't do that, it doesn't change how I feel about my partner if it was just ended up being a long-term commitment and we both didn't want to go the legal route. So is sex important before, I don't want to use marriage, but is sex something important that you do in a relationship as like an icing on the cake once everything else fits and you realize this is someone I would like to spend a, make a long-term intentional commitment with, be my uh, partner in crime. Having sex is something that is important to you at some point in the relationship, regardless if you're married or not. Yeah, I think it's an important thing to be compatible in that way <laughs> if I want to be committed in a relationship long-term. Exactly. I agree. Now, why is having sex with your partner important before the relationship is truly serious? And I guess what I'm really trying to say is, if you were not sexually happy, but 
let's say it was great communication. Um, it was a good spiritual connection, good emotional connection. Everything else was perfect, but the sex wasn't. Could you still move forward with this relationship? Now, and I ask that because, you know, you can always educate someone and eventually teach your partner maybe certain things that works for you and certain things that do not work for you. So could you still see yourself in a long-term commitment with somebody, even if you're not sexually satisfied? I think that depends because I have learned from my past relationships that I can't change people. So if it's a situation where I'm the one trying to make things work and my partner doesn't really have the intention of changing or to put in the other half of the work, then I don't see that working because I'm not going to try to change somebody who's not ready to change. But if it's two people coming together who are willing to learn together, to grow together, to make things work, then yeah, I, I could see that working out. That's a good response because you're right. You can't change people. As we all know how hard it is for us to change our own selves and how stubborn we can be. So changing someone else, it's really, no, that's not the intent. So you're right. It has to be intentional for two people to want to work together and try to meet in the middle regardless what part of the relationship is obviously for this topic it's sex but you're right if it doesn't work out no matter how compatible we may be in other aspects of our lives but sexual compatibility in my opinion is important especially when you plan on being with someone long term because if the puzzle doesn't fit all the way around the board and there's one or two pieces that are off, it's going to be challenging in the relationship. And both people have to be intentional about trying to make it work. And your partner has to be comfortable and understand, well, if she's telling me she's not sexually satisfied, then we need to figure out what's what's happening here. What's the disconnect? What am I doing wrong? What could we do differently to make my partner happy? Oh, 100%. Yeah, totally. So now, should sexual activity be scheduled or planned and explain? And what I mean is, I'm talking about, should you put it on a calendar <laughs> when I say planned, where, honey, on Tuesday night, this is what we're going to do from nine to 10. <laughs> or there's a different type of plan too. There's just a plan where, you know, it could be like most of the time, most people are like, you might send a little cute text message. So are things going down tonight? You know, whatever the verbiage might be, but there are some people that do plan it. Are, what type of person are you? Are you a planner where you need to put it down in your book or is it just needs to flow and happen naturally? <laughs> For me, it needs to flow. I rarely even plan anything so I I used to be such a huge planner I would have like my google calendar would be so full I would even have my breaks put in there I mean it was insane <laughs> and I got to a point where I realized how exhausting that was just for my life and now I just don't plan anything and and it it feels really good to just go with the flow. So for me, sex has to be just flowing. I can't be planning that. <laughs> you can't see yourself putting it down in the book and you know, I, I I have a friend that this is something that is normal for her and she doesn't mind planning. So when she told me that, I was absolutely shocked because in my mind, I didn't think people actually plan, but she was one like, yeah, we can write it down, plan it for the future and that's how it's going to be. And I'm like, girl, what about if you're not in the mood that night? Well, then I'm not in the mood. So you're going to reschedule? She's like, yeah, Th this is what she told me. So now I'm curious to know how many other women out there are planning sex. So, so far, she's the only one I've run into. So we'll see what the other ladies I'm interviewing, what their thought process are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and how much sex is too much sex within a day, a week, or a month? Because there's no perfect number. Everyone's different. But I guess in your case, once a week, twice a week, three times a week, twice a day, once a month? I, <laughs> I mean, I 
don't think there's like a limit to the amount of sex that you can have unless it's a distraction if it becomes something where you can't get on with your day and, and you just want to have sex with your partner then i think that's too much that's unhealthy then <laughs> you need to really check yourself because you you got to be per, uh per, what's the word i'm looking for now i have you have to like be productive throughout your day and if that's all you want to do then you really need to check your life <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, so no number. So I guess it can vary within the week. So if it had five happened five times one week and no times the next, then it shouldn't be a problem because it shouldn't change things in the relationship. It could be you two are really busy. Your partner could be away. Who knows if they, he or she travels? So that makes sense. Now, what does a healthy sex life, sex life mean to you in your relationship? What does quote unquote healthy means to Maggie? Mm, that's a good question. So I would say two partners have to have that respect for each other because to me, I do see sex as a very sacred act mm -hmm. and not to be taken lightly. And if, you know, two people are just trying to do it for the sake of physical pleasure I don't see how that's going to benefit us long term mm -hmm. because if it's only for the sake of physical connection, then I could be doing it with anyone. But if we truly see sex as that sacred act where we have a mental connection, emotional connection and spiritual connection, I think that's so important to me, then that's how we hold sex as that divine act that it is. Gotcha. And you're right. Because at the end of the day, everyone's healthy is different, but you are absolutely correct. Physical connection over time can die out. We all know physically, we all change over the years, rather it's good or bad. Uh, you know, weight can fluctuate, looks can change. So there needs to be other connections there when it comes to healthy, to have a good, healthy sex life. Now, even though you're single right now, do you identify, like, would you want your relationship to be monogamous or are you into swinging? Are you into open relationships? Are you, what's the other word? Do you poly, polyamorous? Would you be yes. open to any of those things? Probably not for me. Personally, I would want a monogamous relationship for sure. Because, I mean, for me, from an energetic standpoint with sex, you're exchanging energy with the person that you're having sex with. And when you have sex with a lot of people, then all of that energy I am then taking on into my energetic field and and it's a lot of messy energy that i have to deal with i got you so with you you're strict monogamous you're not sharing your man that's not something up for discussion now <laughs> if your partner came to you and say hey maggie i'm interested in a threesome i'm assuming that would be a definite no no it would be a no for me <laughs> Now, what about if you're years in, Maggie, you're years into the relationship and your partner presents you this and you guys are, you're living the life. Everything is good. I'm not going to say perfect. There's no such thing as perfect, but would you even entertain the uh, uh, the idea or how do you think you would handle it if years down the line, your partner was to address this to you? And you know, that means that he may have been thinking about this for a while and now finally musters up the courage to bring it to your attention. I mean, if my partner were to bring that up to me, my first question would be, why? Because are we not having a good time? Like what, okay. <laughs> like what is happening, right? Exactly. I would be curious, like why that is, or is this something that he just wants to explore? Okay, so... Are you now, now in such your young age, are you very communicative with your partners going into your relationship, which I'm assuming you are a woman that knows what you want. So at 20 years old, 
you are most likely putting it out there when you're meeting a new partner and having all these discussions. Is this something you would share with them head on? Like, listen, I'm not into the threesomes, open relationship and swinging thing. So I'm telling you right now, if this is something that you even possibly think about, it's not something I'm into. Do you communicate at the beginning of the relationship and and not afraid to just tell it all and put it out there? That way, I feel like later on down the line, there shouldn't be any confusion. I mean, we do know people change. I get that. But if I'm communicating with you, you should communicate with me. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I put everything out on the table. <laughs> the last time I went on a date with someone, I mean, the first day that I met this guy, we were talking about kids, marriage. I mean, I put everything out there because I don't want to waste my time if it's not going to work out. And that's, you're absolutely right. And But some women are because they don't want to feel like, well, if I talk about too much, he may think I'm crazy or I may be a turnoff for him. But I always tell people the right person is not going to be turned off. The right person is going to embrace that energy, is going to respect the fact that you're communicating with them, you're being honest with them, and you're sharing everything up front. Because give me the choice, give me the option, give me the opportunity to say, you know what, I'm not interested and let me walk away. And at the end of the day, there's no hard feelings, no one's hurt, no no one's going to be upset with each other because you were honest with me, I'm honest with you, that's it. But when you don't give someone the choice and when they really, truly don't know and you're leaving them in this unknown territory, you can't be mad at them. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. So we have a few more questions. Now, does size matter when it comes to sex? I would say it matters to a degree. I'm not like a nitpicky about it. <laughs> I'm not pulling out a roller and saying <laughs> you have to be <laughs> matching to like a certain standard. I'm not like nitpicky like that, but I would say it matters to a degree. It matters to a degree. What that what does matters to okay, so I do believe size matters only because I've had both ends of the spectrum. To penis that's too big and penis that's small. So in my opinion, I do feel as though size matters because too big was extremely uncomfortable and it's not something I wanted to deal with long term. Small was more like I'm practically feeling anything. So in my opinion, yes, I do believe size matters. Um, so I'd like to get, I guess, what do you mean by to a degree? If you kind of just take a minute to scan your past relationships and just kind of remember the sexual interaction you had with both. Would you feel as though one was better than the other? And do you feel as though it was based on size or was it based on other things? I would say I'd be okay with a range. I'm not particularly picky about you have to be exactly the size for me to have sex with you. So anything in a range would be okay. But obviously, I wouldn't want anything very extreme, like too small or too big. I would say that's probably out of the picture. And that's the thing. You won't know until you're literally in bed together. So it's hard to <laughs> to really say because like I said that's why it's so hard I feel like even though sex is the icing on the cake and it's usually the last act that is normally should be done after everything else you made sure everything else is compatible that's why I mean by like if you aren't sexually happy could everything else work because for me I'm not going to be sexually happy with a penis size that is extremely too big. I'm not, mm -mm, nope, you're not going to make me uncomfortable every time we go and have sex because then I'm going to dread it. I'm, yeah. I'm going to absolutely dread it because I, I feel like it's kind of like, not to be like all like, but if you, it's kind of like putting something inside a hole that literally doesn't fit and forcing it. It's not comfortable. So that's why I always ask the question like, sexually could the relationship work if you're not sexually compatible for me no that that's important because i would have to tell you right now like listen you're too big and this is not we're either going to have to figure out how we're going to make this work because i don't enjoy sex with you it, it, this is not happening 
every time. I mean, I feel like I'm about to go into battle and it's not good battle. <laughs> and I'm losing every time. <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying. <laughs> but that's just how I feel. That's just how I feel. But um, okay, so I guess it does depend. We'll see because you're 20. So as the years go on, you know, as you experience other partners, I guess time will tell. Yeah. Yeah, time <laughs> will tell. And you'll figure out how to deal with the situation once you're in it. Because it's hard to answer that question when you really, truly haven't been in that situation. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the last question is sex during your period. Now, when I put this discussion question up, it, I didn't think of sometimes there are medical issues that come into play. I interviewed someone who actually she had some medical issues. So she wasn't actually having a period, but she was bleeding for a whole entire year. And when she brought that to my attention, it was interesting because when I put that question on here, I just thought a week out of the month, that's it. She was bleeding for a whole year. Although it wasn't a period, it was happening just like a period. Some days it was heavy, some days it was light. And, you know, she honestly told me, we still had sex. We made it work. We put towels down and you had we had to do what we had to do. I wasn't going to wait a year not to have sex. I mean, <laughs> we were going to figure out how to make this work and they made it work. So now when I ask this question, I like to use that example because there might be a medical issue. There might be something going on. And it wasn't, sex wasn't painful at all, but it's just, she gave me that as an example. So is sex during your period an option? Is it not an option? I would say, so I don't get my period right now because I'm on birth control. But oh, gotcha. when I used to get my period and I was in a relationship, I would probably skip sex on my period because it's just... It's kind of disgusting to me to do that. Mm -hmm. My partner back then, he didn't mind. He was <laughs> like, let's go. <laughs> let's do sure, it. Sure, <laughs> we could do it. I don't think most, well, I shouldn't say that. Men do have, you know, certain criterias, but they probably wouldn't mind. But to you, that's a no. You're not doing that. You're not setting up the towels and doing all that nonsense. That's just not something you're engaging in. You can wait the week. I've done it during my period, so I have tried it, but it's just, it wouldn't be my preference to do it. Gotcha. I wouldn't be initiating it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's okay. I mean, it's, it, it, everyone's different. So everyone is different. Now, how long would you go? Or would you, like you said, you've done it. So if you had to engage in it, it wouldn't be a problem. Because let's say there was something going on and you go like three months and you're bleeding. You would just have to make do. Yeah, I would probably have to make it work by that point. But I mean, I would probably say in the shower because that's, yeah, that's an option that's as a lot well. better. <laughs> yeah, that is an option as well because then you don't have to put the towels down and mess up your towels and all this other stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, I think we are wrapping it up. Is there anything now? Here's what I want to do. I know... With the business that you're in, Maggie, what exactly do you do and how do you help people? Are you into, do you do coaching or is it just physical fitness that you do? I started off my business with just doing physical fitness. So I was coaching people on nutrition and exercise and getting the body that they want. And over time, that got really boring to oh. me <laughs> because <laughs> I was just talking about food and exercise all day. And there are only so many ways that I can talk about it. I even started off my podcast with just talking about food and exercise. And I did maybe like 20, 30 episodes on that. And there was nothing else for me to say. <laughs> so <laughs> nowadays, I expanded to the four areas of fitness. So the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And that's what I talk about on my podcast, in my business. I currently don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore. I do more of these programs that I put out that people can go through on their own so that I can put more content out there on the podcast for free. Oh, so that's nice. Okay. So how long are the programs typically? 
They are self-paced, so you can do it however long, oh. <laughs> however long it takes you. Now, how many programs have you created already, and what do they do? They fall along the lines of those four categories. So, I did just step out of coaching. So I just started creating the programs and I have one that is currently out. It's called Heal. So it's to help people heal through their trauma so that they can really just raise their consciousness and, and shed, all, shed all those layers to help them live a fulfilling life. So that's the one that I currently have. Nice. Now, you're in California, so everything that you obviously offer, doesn't matter where someone is in this world, they can definitely get your, be participate in the program. Yes, it's all online and people can access it from obviously everywhere. Gotcha. And everything will be available on the website. You did send me everything. Now, what is Mind, Muscle, and Enlightenment? What the, What is that? Mind Muscle Enlightenment is my podcast. That's so. the name of the podcast. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, and I see the programs Heal, Free Yourself from Traumas. Now, what is the Magnetic Attractor? That one I am currently in the process of reworking. So it was originally a coaching program, mm -hmm. and now I'm turning that into an entirely self-paced program. But that one is to help people balance their masculine and feminine energies from within so that they can then go and attract the partner that they want. Nice. So it's kind of very similar to manifesting. Yeah, it's pretty much to manifest the relationship, the partner that you want. Nice. I like that. I'm all into that as well. I believe, you know, manifestation is very important. And, uh, People think like, oh, okay, so I'm just supposed to think that I want. No, it gets a lot deeper than that. It's not just you thinking and it's supposed to come. It just doesn't work that way. But um, there's so much more involved when it comes to manifesting because you really, it has to be a serious conviction and you really have to know what you want. Okay, can I have a red lollipop? I think people take it as a joke at times, but it's manifestation is real. If you really, truly are in that mental state and you're really, truly manifesting stuff that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, we're manifesting all the time. Our thoughts are constantly being created into mm -hmm. our reality. So whether you consciously are aware of manifestation or not, I mean, you are doing it. You're doing it every day. Yep. Even if you don't aren't aware, if you don't believe in it. All right. So Maggie, everything is going to be on the website. Now, what do you have to say to our listeners based off of your childhood experience? Um, you're such a young and bright woman and smart with a good head on your shoulder. Shit, you're better than me when I was 20 because I would say I was mature, but you beat me by a long run, because I feel like even some of my decisions when I was 20, I look back and like, Shirley, really, you were stupid. But um, every day I'm growing and we're all growing every day. But what do you have to give to a woman that's in her 20s, in her prime, entering life? What do you have to say to her based off of your life experience, where you are now, um, the topic that we just discussed today, and just the fact that at 20 years old, I told you, you're my youngest one for the season. And you were able to muster up the energy like, yeah, I could talk about this, but no problem. Let's go. What do you have to say to people in your age range? Thank you so much for that. No and problem. I would say it's a lot of self work and looking inward because I did come from a place of sexual trauma and for me now to be comfortable with the topic to not have any guilt or shame around all of that it took a lot of healing behind the scenes that maybe people don't see and people look at me now and they they say wow you're so happy and positive all the time but behind the scenes there's a lot of crying there's a lot of breaking down and going through the shadows but it's through those shadows it's through going that going through that darkness that's when we can bring all of that into the light mm -hmm. and going through the traumas the adversities that I've been through those were all such 
gifts in my life and for anyone who is going through adversities and challenges just know that these things are all meant to take us to the next level in our lives because if things were going so well all the time we would never learn we would never grow and the entire point of this whole experience is so that we can go through these things and then come out of it on the other side and be so much stronger than we were before. Thank you very much, Maggie. I love that message. And as you all heard, you know, as Maggie just said, even through her childhood traumas that she went through, she have been able to still see the joy in life. Life is beautiful and it's and life is really truly what we make it. As adults, we need to always stop making excuses. Stop finding someone to blame for everything. We have more control over our life than we play we do. But it's easier for us to cast blame than for us to just really truly stand on our two feet and take responsibility for our actions. Also, As Maggie just said, don't be scared about the trauma that you're going through or have been through. A trauma is someone's testimony and someone that hears your story is always going to be encouraged by it. So don't be ashamed by it. And there are going to be dark days. You know, once you close the door to your house, people don't see the tears, the bad days, but it's going to happen. But you just have to find the strength, stay positive, and realize that it will get better because trauma is supposed to strengthen you. It's not supposed to weaken you. God is not going to put anything on your path that you can't handle. Anything he puts along the way, he knows you can deal with, and you need to find the strength to get up every day, do what you're supposed to do, and look past those heartaches. So as we end the episode today, I always want to say thank you for listening, to love yourself, voice yourself, and be yourself. And until the next podcast, have a great day, guys. Thanks for tuning in to Fampale Podcast. If you want to continue the conversation or share your takeaways, I want to hear from you. Head on over to the website or join our Facebook community and comment your favorite part of the show or share your thoughts. I want to hear what you have to say. Don't forget to rate and subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Chat with you next week.